Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing the Hori Pad Mini for the Nintendo Switch. Now, this is a controller that I really wanted to review for a little while, but getting it in Canada was a little bit of a challenge, which is why this video was delayed slightly. But now that I have it, I can't wait to share my review with all of you. And just before we get to the close-up, don't forget that if you like these videos and you want to see more, hitting the like button really does help out a lot, and subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. So first, I always like to take a quick look at the box. Box is very simple presentation. You get an image of the controller. Right now, they're banking a lot on the Pokemon franchise, but who can blame them, right? Sides of the box, you get a quick view of the controller here. A different one on the other side. And at the back of the box, we basically get a description that they're really saying that the controller is very, very small, showing you it size-wise compared to a Nintendo Switch. It also says it's designed for comfort and tells you that it has a turbo functionality. Now let's put the box away and take a look at the controller itself. So here's what we were really here to see. Now, first of all, you have a 10 foot cable. So the cable is very, very long. However, I would have liked to see it detachable, but it is not. So we're just gonna keep it tied up like this, but unfortunately it's gonna be in the scene. Now, first of all, the controller is extremely light. However, what I was really surprised is that it is very solid. Although it is light, the plastic is very rigid, has no give to it, and the build quality actually surprised me. What also surprised me is the quality of the joysticks and the D-pad. They feel very good, not as good as high quality controllers like the Pro Controller itself, but nonetheless, way better than I expected. If I compare this to, let's say, the PDP Rock Candy controller, which is another co small controller geared towards a budget audience, the D-pad and the joysticks feel a lot higher quality on this controller than on that one. Then we have responsive clicky buttons for the face buttons. However, we have rubbery buttons for home, capture, plus minus, and the turbo button is also rubbery. If we look at the top, the triggers are all basically normal sized. And this is something actually that disappointed me a little bit. I really like when they extend the ZR, ZL buttons into really a trigger format. I would have preferred to see that on this controller than such a small presentation, just because sometimes when you're searching it out with your fingers, you can get mistaken between the two since they're almost the same size. Lastly, I'll show you the back, but there's really nothing to see here. Now this is a normal Pro Controller. It's just reshelled, that's why it looks a little different. But the reason I brought it into shot is just so that you can see at what point this controller is so much smaller. Basically, if we put these one over the other, size-wise, basically it's like you cut off all the grips on the Pro Controller. It is that small. Now, comfort-wise, for larger hands, that really disadvantages the Hori Pad Mini, but for children or people with smaller hands, this is probably going to be one of the most comfortable controllers you can play with right now. And we'll look at those details more in the scoring of the controller. Now, since this is a wired controller, function wise, it's pretty barren. Basically, there's no rumble, there's no motion control, but that's all expected for a wired controller. It does not read NFCs. However, as I mentioned really quickly earlier, it does have the added turbo functionality. But basically, you're not buying this controller because you have a feature-packed controller. So lastly, I always like to show you how to use the turbo functionality. It is very simple on this controller, but it's still nonetheless interesting to look at. So basically, any of the buttons can be turboed. All you need to do is basically, let's go into the test button input. So right now, as you can see, my Y button is on normal inputs. Even if I hold it down, it's not getting multiple inputs. All you need to do is you hold the turbo button and the button you want turboed. The green light is on, means your turbo functionality is activated. As you can see, I'm getting continuous Y inputs. If you hit it again, turbo with the Y, your button, your turbo locks. So now my it's continuously inputting Y functions till I turn it off. And lastly, you hold it again, it turns off your turbo functionality. Not any harder than that. And like I said, you can turbo any of the face buttons and any of the trigger buttons. So now that we know what all the functionalities are, let's talk about the scoring. And as usual, we always start with the general feel of the controller and build quality. 
By the way, if you ever wonder how I score my reviews, there is a video on my channel that is a very detailed description of how I do my scoring. However, you'll get pretty much everything you need out of this review. Now, in this category, I am going to do something very exceptional. I'm actually going to give two scores. If you have smaller hands, the build and feel of this controller, in my opinion, would be a four out of five. If I take my daughters, for example, this is their favorite controller now. They even like it better than the PDP Rock Candy controller, which was their previous favorite controller, just because it fits their hands perfectly. However, you've, if you have adult hands or larger hands, this will be a three out of five. The build quality is not at question here. I was actually surprised. For such a small and light controller, it actually feels quite solid and well built. However, for large hands, the controller is just very, very uncomfortable for long play sessions. You have to get that claw type grip on the controller, which just doesn't fit. However, for smaller hands, they are going to love this thing. Now we get to the features and aesthetics category. And for a wired controller, it's always a little tougher of a category. And this controller will be getting a 4 out of 10. Now numerically, it's very easy to understand. It gets a free point because it's a wired controller, so we don't need to look for a rechargeable battery. I'm giving it two extra points because aesthetics wise, I think this is a very clean, very nice aesthetic. And finally, it gets an additional point for having a turbo functionality added to it. However, I can't give it any of the other points because it doesn't read NFCs, it doesn't have rumble, it doesn't have motion controls. But once again, this isn't unusual for a wired controller. It's to be expected even. So now we get to the all important gaming scores. And the first category is going, as usual, going to be FPS and action games. And in this category, I have to give this controller a 7 out of 10. For a controller of this type, it's still a solid score. It has the basic functions. It has asymmetrical joysticks. It also has responsive buttons. However, it lacks the vibration and motion control. So if your games do can profit from those additional functions, they're just not available on this controller. And also the trigger buttons at the back being so small means that if you're playing an FPS game or an action game where you have to use the right trigger to shoot very often, this controller is going to become quite uncomfortable. Next, we move on to 2D platformers and side scrollers. And in this category, I'm going to be giving this controller a solid 8 out of 10. This controller basically, once again, has all the major functions you're going to want for 2D side scrollers and platformers. The lack of vibration and motion control also is less important because it's rare that it's integrated into these games in any meaningful way. On top of it, the D-pad is much, much more solid than I thought it would be for this model, meaning that it works very well for 2D platformers. And lastly, having that turbo functionality can be very important in these games. Next, we have traditional 2D fighting games. And in this category, I have to give this controller a 7.5 out of 10. Basically, it's a little bit lower than the platformers because although the D-pad once again is still solid, once again, the vibration and the motion controls generally really aren't important for this category. Unfortunately, the fact that the trigger buttons at the back are so small and so close together, if you have to use them regularly in these fighting games, it will happen that you will sort of hook one while you're trying to aim for the other. And unfortunately, in these games, it can actually be a pretty drastic difference between hitting one and the other. So the last category we're going to look at are racing and kart games. So our Mario Karts, our Need for Speeds, and whatnot. Now, in this category, I have to give this controller, once again, a 7 out of 10. Unfortunately, this is one of the categories, once again, where having motion control and vibration actually do add quite a bit to the gameplay. And unfortunately, once again, this being a wired controller, it doesn't have those functions. It also is one of the categories, once again, where having the turbo functionality generally really isn't going to be used or really going to add anything to your gameplay. However, at the same time, for the rest of the controller, everything is pretty solid. Buttons are responsive, joysticks work well, as I said earlier. So at the same time, this is not a bad controller for this category. There's just better options. So now overall, that gives this controller a score of 37.5 out of 55. Now, I used the 4 for the uh, feel and build quality of the controller. Remember that if you have larger hands, you should deduct a point to my normal scoring process. Now, as a final thought, however, on this controller, I do want to say that I find that in this case, the scoring is a little deceptive, as it was for the PDP Rock Candy controller. 
Number one, these are really ultra budget controllers. Generally, the price is pretty low. We're at talking $25 or less for these controllers when they're at full price. And generally when you find them on sale, you can easily go way below that. Number two, I really think this controller is targeting a very specific audience, children and people with smaller hands. And for these people, this controller could become a top graded controller because there just aren't that many controllers that are geared towards them. And I really want to drive this point home because like I said, my children before, even though the PDP Rock Candy controller wasn't a top rated controller if we're looking at the scores on the channel, it was their favorite controller overall because it was the one that fitted their hands the best. Now for my younger daughters, it's this controller. Basically my eight year old won't play if she doesn't have this controller. Because now that she has one that fits all her hands and that she doesn't actually have to sort of shift her grip to hit some of the trigger buttons at the back, well, she's in love with the controller and doesn't want to play with anything else. So that's just something to keep in mind with this review. Because although we do a serious scoring system on the channel, I do find it important to maybe look sometimes at what audience we're targeting with the controller and see if they did a good job. And I find that in this case, Hori did a very good job. But well, you know what? I'd like to hear from all of you. If anyone has this controller, let me know if you agree or disagree with my findings. And anyway, as usual, I hope you guys liked this review. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, and also don't forget to hit the notification bell so you know when all my videos come out. And as usual, I hope I'll see you in my next video.